Hello and welcome to today's video. This time we're going to be taking our fourth foot through my vintage pan giant paperbacks, giving them a, a thorough brush up clean and getting them looking as good as possible to put back into the collection. So sit back, relax and let's get to it. Okay, starting off with this one then, Warlock by Oakley Hall and a rather nice W. Francis Phillips jacket on that one. I really uh, like that particular artist he takes little elements of of a story and uh, puts those elements onto the cover in this case you've got the the deputy sheriff's badge some some money and of course the revolver a uh, little money pouch there a couple of bullets it's brilliant really really like that author artist i should say rather now this is uh, one of their later westerns pan didn't really do a lot of westerns not in this sort of period so i guess this is a real good one and um, it's got a little seven stroke 79 so it may be that the last time this one was read by the previous owner was july 1979 you do find that lots of people put a little note in when they last read a book i guess they can give themselves a certain amount of time before they have another stab at it and, and the thing with these giant ones of course and they're all three and six price wise which is why they're in the giant series uh, but they're also usually uh, quite a bit thicker than a regular sort of a pan number or, or a great pan this is x96 i haven't by any means got the full run i'm still actively collecting the giants and the great pans in fact um my main focus with pan always was to try and get the um the original numbered ones licked which i have done now so um now I'm moving on to the, 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 the later series of Whales and Men, R.B. Robertson. Hmm. Men who go whaling. Hmm. Yeah, not a... Not a subject I'm keen on. I don't like whales being hunted at all. Captain Blood, Raphael Sabatini. Yes, uh, got his fans, this this chap. And uh, yeah, piracy on the high seas. That's his, uh, that's his game. <laughs> Not bad. I actually thought I had a slightly better copy of that one, but there we go. Um, quite collected, the uh, Raphael Sabatini books. Now this one's a bit odd. It's got one of those ones I've seen this before. Where have a look. The spine is it's been read a few times, so the, the glue of the spine has popped out, and it's created this sort of dome on the spine. So it's absolutely rock solid. I can't re-glue that back in. I've got a couple of books that do that. It must have just been the glue that was used in these particular ones, you know, more than anything. So not a great one. Um, so first published 52, and this is the 1961 reprint, uh, would have been the first with, with that particular number on. Now I'm gonna pull the camera out just a touch. There we are, gives us a little bit more room. The Red Barbarians, Life and Times of Mao Zedong. Wow, China today, yesterday, today, and tomorrow. Wow, what a topical book that is even today. Not the sort of thing Pam would, you know, publish a lot of, but um, they did do a little bit of um, non-fiction. And uh, what they did tend to be on interesting subjects that other publishers weren't really covering, a bit like that, you know. Caroline Cherie. Oval cover there. This definitely looks like one that's been picked up in a charity shop or something like that. <laughs> it's all right, condition-wise, not too bad. Ah, uh, yeah, end of the world story. Alas, Babylon. Alone in a wrecked world, they feared each other more than Fallout. A little bit of foxing on the edges there, but not too bad. 1961 is when we're looking at here, so uh, 62 years old as we film this. Now, is this the one with a little letter inside? I'm just trying to think. Oh, I might have pulled it out, of course. Can't remember. I think it was this one, though. Yeah, I'm sure when I originally picked this one up, it had a little 
letter from Pan, and um, I think it's probably separate with my sort of Pan bits of ephemera and, and bits and pieces and little letters and stuff. So, uh, but yeah, I had a this was like a promo one. I could pick this one up in uh, Tavistock in uh, in Devon from a book dealer. In actual fact, I see bottom of the spines come away a tiny bit there, not the back cover rather, but it's not glueable, sadly. I'm just going to have to live with that for now. The Reluctant Widow, Georgia Hayer. That's okay. Yeah, not too bad. Nothing to do with the Stephen King uh, book, Dance Macabre. Sensational novel by the author of Man with a Tin Trumpet, X10. I think this one is a, a reprint. I'm pretty sure this is a reprint. Actually, it's not that. Pan, uh, Pan 1962. The thing is, if you look at the Pan logo, it's different. It's a much later font. They must have gone back and uh, filled, either rejacketed that one or they went back and filled the number in, uh, one or the two. All right, now this one, once again, it's got that bottom bit of the cover that's come away. It's got a, like a little nick there, but that can't, once again, it can't be glued. It's not the spine that's got damaged, it is the back cover. Someone's um, previous owner sort of held it in their hand like that and they bent it back somehow, which is a bit annoying, isn't it? That is a bit annoying. But that's okay, so let us give this little pile a brush now. So we'll sort of do these as we go along, because we've got a few piles here to do today. Now, uh, you may or may not have seen depends when you watch this of course. Um, over on my other channel I did have a bit of an announcement that I made till end of last week. Uh, basically I've, my main channel's got a sponsor um, and they're sending me to the Comic Con um, to film a video for them. Uh, this is the London Comic Con, not the uh, New York or San Diego one, it's the London one. And I'm going up with my son. Um, and because of that, and because of the, the traveling and the time involved doing these um, basically sponsored videos it is going to impact my filming time to do my more regular videos stuff like this in fact so what I'm thinking of doing it might be next week's video but more likely it'll be the week after that on this channel what I'm going to do I recently posted a video of my um, pickups for the last couple of months and that included lots of new books as well as lots of cleaning and for the people who don't watch my other channel, it's like a three and a half hour video. But for the people who don't watch my other channel, what I'm going to do, I'm going to re-edit that one. And just include the cleaning bits. None of my commentary or showing off the new, brand new books that I've been sent or bought. And it will just be purely cleaning. And I'm going to have that one in as like a, a mini, a different edit to uh, something that you'll see at the moment where I'm going through my collection logically and it's simply because I just don't have I'm not going to have the time to do a whole dedicated cleaning video um, maybe next week will be fine it's the week after that's going to be tough so I'm going to have it for then but it'll only be a one-off there won't be any more introduction it will just be me coming straight in and um, hopefully if you've not seen the main video you'll uh, enjoy that slightly edited version because it is uh, there's some brilliant stuff in there that all needed careful cleaning there we are. Then um, each pile also needs polishing. So all of these are polishable. And I've got a nice, uh, relatively clean, relatively clean uh, duster. Let's give this one a good, good clean now. A nice copy of that one actually. I'm off to uh, visit Morris tomorrow at All You Need Is Books. He's a big book dealer up in uh, Dorset. 
not Dorset Bob, but near, nearby. I think actually not Dorset, uh, Wiltshire, I think is more where he lives, near uh, near Longleat. And he's got a big warehouse. In fact, he's got two, two warehouses now of books. And uh, he's always got really fascinating stuff to, to find, just stuff that you just don't really see. And um, thankfully, I'm really pleased I'm going to be meeting up with my good friend Steve, the Outlaw Bookseller. He's been through a tough old time lately. He's had COVID. He's um, uh, not been too well, you know. Um, and uh, we haven't had a, a trip out together in ages. So that will also be super cool. I'm looking uh, looking forward to meeting up with Steve. He's an absolute font of knowledge. And if you're into science fiction, I do recommend subscribing to Steve's channel, which is called The Outlaw Bookseller, where he does a lot of book content, as well as some other stuff like records and things like that. So uh, a bit of a variety, a bit like my channel, really. Although we're heavily into books, that would be the main thing that I cover on my channel, of course. So Steve does do other things as well, just the same as me. So uh, we've got very similar tastes, since Steve and I used to work together as book buyers for Waterstones many years ago and Steve still works in the book business now and uh, he's a real knowledgeable, I've written a few books himself on um, science fiction authors and things like that and top fantasy books so yeah great great channel if you've never never checked Steve out with the the better condition books ones that are in really top shape when you start cleaning into them they really uh they really do start to shine don't they i just love it i just wish all my books were really tip top shape but sadly that's not the case um but with pan i'm always happy to take a lower grade copy with the hope that you know down the line a better one will come along and inevitably they do um, but it's a never-ending job like uh, upgrading your, your penguin book collection for example it's so so tough to uh, find them all in really nice condition I got I was down uh, at one point a couple of years ago I needed a, I still need eight or nine vintage penguin books to complete my set and um, just this Sunday gone, I've, I got another one off that list. I'm now down to just one. Can you believe it? One penguin book, and I'll have the whole lot, which is uh, quite, quite incredible. The one, the last one I'm needing, which is called Death on the Borough Council, that one did turn up on eBay, and it was the same seller I got the other one that I needed from. Now, the one that I got on Sunday was one called Speedy Death, and um, I ended up paying £77 for it which is all right in actual fact, because I saw three copies sell last year. One of them in an absolutely appalling state went for 200. And then another one, which was about the same as mine, uh, the one that I've just bought went for 250. Now mine with the 77 pound one, it has got a detached spine, uh, sorry, a detached front cover. Um, and most of the spine, or about two thirds of the spine is missing, including the title and the number. However, I've got a friend of mine who is a book designer, a friend of mine called Mark. He designs books for Oxford University Press, amongst others. And um, he has a, he's a Photoshop wizard. And um, on one of my other rare penguins, one called the Murder at the Admiralty, and we were, I was in a similar state and I was able to clean it up and then put a replacement spine on and attach the front and back covers back on. And it looks absolutely fantastic on the shelf. Um, and I'm going to do the same thing with the copy of Speedy Death, which hasn't arrived yet, but I'm expecting it to arrive tomorrow. And uh, what I'm going to do, the entire process, including how my mate makes the uh, the spine, um, is going to be coming up in a future video. So I uh, keep an eye out for that. It's going to be hopefully a really, uh, really good and interesting video for a lot of people. And certainly until a better copy of Speedy Death 
comes my way, I'm happy to have this first print in, in the uh, in the lower condition. It doesn't bother me one bit. At least it gets another one out of the way. The last one I need, yeah, Death on the Borough Council. That that turned up from the same seller on eBay, and um, it was the first one I'd seen on eBay for I think five years. Um, it was the second one I've seen for sale in 12 months. The first one was for sale from a dealer and um, he had it at 150 pounds, and um, which was way too cheap uh, for a really nice copy as well. And I emailed him and I said, look, it's too cheap. You need to put your price up and I'll gladly pay you much, much more than that. But it was just names out of a hat, basically. And um, it went to a collector, so that's fine. It, it's not a problem. But then another one turned up on eBay and this one had the front and back cover detached and it still went for £377. So it shows how rare that one is. But that's the last one I need to finish my set. So uh, if anyone out there has got a copy of Death on the Borough Council in the first printing, from Penguin, do let me know. <laughs> right, hopefully it'll be one of those ones that um, it will just land in my lap and it'll be like, wow, I just don't believe it, you know. Right, there we are. So that is pile number one. Let's just crack on. So, Grand Hotel, looking well. Yeah, new edition. Resets. So this is the uh, that's a bit rough, isn't it? But yeah, not the greatest copy that one. So I think I'm going to put that on my wants list as an upgrade. So X113. Yeah, I think that needs a better copy of that if I can find one. Devil in Bucks County X114. Another big thick one. Someone can quite finish it by the look of it. I'm reading an absolutely massive book at the moment by uh, Hiraki Murakami. It's called um, The Wind Up Bird Chronicle. Um, it is absolutely enormous. It's about 650 pages. I've almost finished it now. It's really good. I'm sort of savouring it a bit. I don't want to rush it at all. You get that with some books. You just don't want them to end. And this is one of them. Although it's a huge book. Um, in fact, when it was released in Japan, it was in three... It was three volumes, and when it came over here in translation, it did um, get put into one big thick book, and it is great. It really, really is. I got a beautiful hardback as well of it. They've re-released them with new jackets and a new introduction by the author, and um, they're great. There's six of them in the series, and I've got two now. I'd certainly like to get the other ones if I could. Narvik. Another one of those war memoirs. That pan did so very well. They really did. They were the the masters of the war memoir, weren't they? And uh, I think they became the publisher of choice after the success of Colditz and uh, the Dam Busters. Um, they just had the market, didn't they? And uh, they must have been very attractive to anybody who had a decent war war memoir, you know. Seek the fair land. What a great jacket that is! Once again by Taylor. Superb. It's very uh, windy today here in the studio. Lots of rain and wind. Uh, we need to get a price there. Very, very faint. Generally does it on this. Just looks very, very fragile, that bit of paper, that corner there. So I think we've done as best as we can on that. Henderson the Rain King. Ah, what a book. There we are. What a quote. Yeah, it's got some fox in, but apart from that, it's a nice, absolutely fine copy with me. That's lovely. Encore Coltilde, one of those, uh, another one of those sort of romancy ones. 
And there certainly was a market for this sort of thing. Sort of books I remember my grand reading by the bucket load. Desert Generals. Another war title. Now this one here is actually a reissue, um, X129. I haven't got the first printing of this. Um, yeah, so the one I'm looking for is the 1962 printing. I've got the earlier one in pan, but this is the, the 1962 print is the actual edition, the exact edition of this one that I want. Um, it's probably quite interesting, although I imagine a lot of the facts have been superseded with you know, more modern books on looking at Hitler's, Hitler's life, you know. Um, so, one I'm keeping a lookout for as a slightly earlier edition. Here we are, so here's another example. So, first printed by Pan in 52, it had a reprint in 54, probably with a different jacket, then this new edition, 1962. So, that would have been the first time that X132 was issued, and this is a, a, a unique jacket to this particular edition. So, uh, you got to be on your game with Pan, you know, because they uh, they throw in the odd curveball. Um, it's not like Penguin, where if a new a book a new edition came out, a new printing, and they they would generally keep the same number. Um, but Pan didn't do that because they broke their number. Their numbering went up by price. It's um it's quite tricky to keep on top of it unless you really are au fait with how they do their uh, numbering. But I'm sure any collector now must know quite well. Zaza Gabor. Well, you don't hear anything of Zaza Gabor anymore, but uh, this is her story, apparently. It was a big, uh, big hit in her day, I guess. That's a slightly rougher copy, but it'll do. Let's turn that over. It's got a little 30p inside. 30p. Being quite careful with this rubbing out because if it's been priced up you know, through the second hand system a few times and the price has been in and rubbed down, in and rubbed down, the paper that I'm rubbing out, this little corner tends to get quite fragile and I don't want to rip it if I can help it. It's quite easily, easily done that. as it's going to get it's got a, what's that, a bit, yeah look it's got a little review inside there so not the greatest of copies but 
you know, honestly, I'm not too fussed about looking to upgrade it. This is an absolute beauty, isn't it? Look at that. That's almost perfection. The White Oak Brothers, 141. Look at that. Bit of uh, polish on the back there. Should get the little belt off. But on the whole, that's almost perfect. And this is, yeah, this is the reissue again. First with this number. That's an absolute beauty. Sheldon did the cover. Wow, wow, wow. That is lovely. That's a lovely copy. Surgery Holds the Door, George Sava. So George Sava did lots of these sorts of novels on surgeons and um, it sort of ties in in the early 60s with that craze around nurse romance novels. And there was a lot of shows on TV, things like Dr. Kildare, for example, which um, maybe started a bit of a boom with it. Richard Chamberlain was a real heartthrob with the ladies. And... Uh, I think that sort of ties in with that because there was a few of those books in the end. Devil's Advocate, that's quite a famous one, isn't it? And this is a reissue of that, so that's the original, and this is the uh, a reprint with a different jacket. Not quite so nice shape, actually. Um, usually when I pick up a later edition, I, I keep it if it's really nice nick. This one actually, uh, because of its sort of silvery cover, it's not the greatest of conditions. So what printing is this? It's 7th of 1967, so five years later, but it'll do for now. It's, uh, it's okay. Magnificent Obsession. The Robe. A PEF jacket there, very minimalistic for PEF, isn't it? I guess this is past his heyday now. He was the artist of the mid to late 1950s, not so much in the 60s. He moved on to other things. And this one here, this is edition 52. The one I would really like would be the 1962 edition, not this one here. So uh, that will be probably still on my wants list, but it's like a, a placekeeper for now. The Fiery Furnace, okay, Lawrence Williams, yeah, quite a few marks and things on the back of this one, so not, not idea, in fact it's even water soaked, so I'm going to immediately put this one on my upgrade list, so X149, The Fiery Furnace by Lawrence Williams, so I haven't put many on the, the upgrade list today, but this one is unfortunately a bit too low grade for what I'd like. So I'm gonna... Tidy as best I can. Just a few turned over corners and things. Not great, not awful, but <laughs> it's a it's a placeholder, should we say? The hosts of Rebecca, Alexander Cordell. He was a popular author, but you never hear anything about nowadays. But in his day, he was a popular chap. And this one's got a pencil mark in. What does it say? E P sixty five P first pan. Okay. So someone there was evidently it was checking the printing of this book. The first pan is what we like. Ideally. But when you're a pan collector and you're in love with the jackets, which I really am, I just love them so much, you end up picking up even like later printings and things, which is uh, that's the sign of a of a collector, you know. Um, here is, look, well, I couldn't have said it any better. Look, Hosts of Rebecca, and then another copy of The Hosts of Rebecca, but with a new jacket on. So there you go. Simply collected two copies because it's got a different jacket. Yeah, just a later printing with a different jacket on. So let's put a cross through the pan logo there. There we are. But yeah, that's absolutely fine. Just a later one. 
the fall of Singapore. So I believe this is the first printing, and what a great jacket that is. The authentic and angry story of Britain's most crushing military disaster. Fantastic. Yeah, the fall of Singapore was was a disaster. And um, yeah, it really was. Now this is a reissue where they've used a bit of the jacket. This is that's the original jacket, of course. They've used the man on it again, so you can sort of see how it's been reused. I guess that's you know this is much more a few more years after that original one. So that was sixty two. This one is sixty seven. The second printing. Five years later, designs had changed, and that was a bit more in keeping with what Pam were were putting out around that time. A prince of cap of a prince of the captivity, a John Buckham. This is one I don't actually know. I don't think I've ever read this one. I've read the main John Buckham, well, his most famous ones, Thirty Nine Steps, Green Mantle, and uh, Prester John, but I haven't read that one. Cool, that's fine. So anyway, let's give these a brush a -rooney. None of these have been massively dusty, but they have had some dust on them. Some are, I think, a little bit worse than others, but nothing too bad. Cool. All right, last stack now. Okay, away from home. Rona Jaffe, another nice cover from Oval there. It was a great... Great eyes, they were all good, weren't they? Still 1962. It's incredible, all from this little, little period. This one is not the original. I'm after um, the correct X edition of this. This is a later one. This is the 1966 one. I want the 1963 one of Mancurian Candidate, but this is still a nice jacket. So quite happy to have that one, but I wouldn't mind the slightly earlier edition. Another absolutely minter, Maza de la Roche. Look at this Rene's daughter. Oh, great, great jacket. Look at the condition of it. Unread, got to have been unread. This is what they would have all been like when they were brand new. Yeah, this is the 1962 reprint. As about as mint as you could get that. Absolutely awesome. Another one of those, uh, the loves of Caroline Sherry. <laughs> and this one's a little bit more the worse for wear compared to the last one, which was just straight from the shelf. I would describe it as a time machine book. defied the ravages of time. The gamesters. Of course, once we've gone through this pile, we need to get polishing again. So we're not quite done yet. The Chinese Love Pavilion. Yeah, 
Yeah, just about okay. Now we'll shoot. Landfall. Yeah, see, that's a, that's not the correct printing. It's an early one, but it's not the first one to use that number. It's a slightly later edition. Best of mics. Yeah, I never really knew what the mics were all about, to be honest. A tiny bit of the spine we can repair there. Dig my glue out. I've done any gluing today, but it's only a tiny slither. Just in here. That's where I want to stick it, just in there. There we are. Just to stop that getting any worse. good oh Agatha Christie first one of these we've seen today obviously a reissue at least it might actually be a first I don't know yes yeah, a first it's just a first pan of evil under the sun well, well there you go not in the greatest of condition Can't complain because it's crusty. I'm not going to complain. Couple of turned over corners, that's all. There we are. So, not perfect by any means, but you know, it is what it is. It's as good as we're going to get. now i will put it on the upgrade list i think because i would like a better one of that so x170 evil under the sun agatha christie then we got a doris leslie the perfect wife x173 1963 now so we have moved on a year at least and the last one before we get polishing again is my favorites in suspense Selected by Alfred Hitchcock, apparently. I just think he lent his name to it half the time. This one's got a splash of something on the edge there, but nothing too bad. But not the greatest of copies again. But not the worst either. It's just, it is what it is, really. So let's give this lot a brush. And then we've got to go back and do three piles of polishing. So let's flip it over. <clears throat> And amazingly, this was another whole box filled of vintage pan goodness. spotted that this one also has a tiny bit of gluing required on the bottom of the spine in there look at that so that's what we're going to do
got a bit of dust coming off that Hitchcock. <laughs> Lovely. Right, let's give this last few wedges a polish. And uh, some will be worth worse than others, but you know, we do as best we can. Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah, so uh, next week. I think it will be, um, what will it be next week? I think it might be Penguin Books. There will be, it may not be Penguin Main Series. I might do something else a bit different, maybe some Pelicans or something. Um, and then um, I'm gonna, the week that I'm away, I'm gonna put up the uh, sort of the mega length recent pickups video, but just, just the cleaning part of it in a little edit. So look out for that one. That'll be a really nice long one. And then the week after that, it will be, um, well, I don't know, I haven't really planned it out that long. We shall see, we shall see. It's quite a busy old time, up until the end of November. Then things thankfully start to ease off a little bit.
that second part all polished and looking as good as we can get them I've been doing a lot of work on my pans lately I've had some new additions to slide in and some upgrades and it's been pretty cool and I've uh, been having a bit of a mini shunting session with the pans that I do own and it's uh, always great to go through them I love them so much recent video on the main channel in three parts in fact has been covering the entire vintage numbered pan series I got the full set of those now and uh, I've done them in three sets and it's really really great to see them all like that and I'm actually going to do a compilation of that video putting all three parts into one once again that'll be on the main the main channel Right, this is one of those real minters, but just had a little little mark on the back. Yeah, I don't know if we can. Yeah, look at that. It's come up. I was hoping it would almost disappear completely. Yeah, just got one crease on the back of the spine with back cover there. But apart from that, that is just lovely. It's lovely. either actually so we did have a few faults Thank you. 
last one of this stack. Is that John Buckham? go. Try and find a clean bit of cloth here for this last wedge. Yeah, some of these are a little bit grubby, but not too bad, not too bad. through these early 1960s pan books as much as I have. Real little slice of pan history again today. I do love them so. thinking we were almost done and then I found another bit of spines sorting out
So yeah, so if you've enjoyed today's video, please don't forget to give it that thumbs up again. If you're not already, hit the subscribe button. We're on our way to 2,000 subscribers at the moment on this channel. On the other one, over on my main channel, we're almost at 25,000 now. So that one's uh, going great guns. And um, I'm doing a Ask Me Anything video for that little anniversary. So um, if there is anything that you have, which is a burning question, uh, do hop on over there and uh, leave a comment and I'll start compiling those for a 25th, 25,000 subscriber video, which should be in about six weeks. The way it's uh, the way it's going. Thank you for watching today. I yeah, hope you enjoyed it. And uh, as I said, I'll see you again in seven days' time. And we'll be cleaning another wedge of the collection. Thanks very much for watching today, if you've made it to the end. And I shall uh, see you again soon.